Dragonflight is just around the corner, so you might be asking how are things looking so far. Stick around and let's have a chat about how they feel so far in the beta. You want to feel like an unstoppable force like that fancy title you got from running around aimlessly during battlegrounds? Dragonflight is the place to be for unstoppable tanks. They're like Boromir taking a thousand arrows without... Wait, what? He died? Spoiler alert. Where was his healer? Don't worry. If you roll as a tank in Dragonflight, you're going to feel like you don't even need a healer half the time. Tanks have never felt better. Most talent trees in Dragonflight give you a way to amp up your damage, or take less if you're into that sort of thing. Let's take a look at each one and see how they're doing. Fair disclaimer here, I am not a professional. I play the for the fun of it. I assume most of you do too. So this isn't going to be some kind of weird guide on how to parse 8 million DPS without a weapon on. We just want to know how they play. Who should we look at first? Let's take a look at an old classic. Druid. What's so special about an old grumpy bear who chain pulls the entire dungeon, then blames the healer for getting everyone killed? Yeah, they're still gonna do that. But this time they're gonna do it Moonkin style. I mean, one of the options they have is using a lot of Moonfire. Moonfire can pull, can be a big DPS bump, and now it even heals you. What? Yep, now you can increase your arcane damage dealt and have it heal you for 30% of the damage it deals. Not to mention the fact that if you take the Guardians of the Galaxy talent, it'll do a ton more damage and generate rage as well so you can keep up on that iron fur. Bear Tank didn't have as much damage as some of the other ironclad sausages we'll talk about later, but you should have no issue keeping the trashies from sending your healer to the maw. A word of caution, if you're new to tanking with a bear, if you struggle with cooldown management, you might not feel super great about this tank in higher level content. If that's not an issue for you and you've got some weird bear fetish, then this is the tank for you. Okay, who's next? Death Knight. The core of Death Knight hasn't changed much. Get yourself down to about 20% health just to give your healer a heart attack, then patch it up with a single death strike. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, incoming damage can still feel a little spiky with these guys. On the bright side, you have more than enough self-healing capability to call yourself Deadpool and feel like the only thing wrong with you is how your face is. You can choose to take AMC if you're feeling generous, or if your raid leader runs your whole life. Or you can just leave everyone else to fend for themselves when an elemental comes to blast you into oblivion. You also have grips for days with these talent options. You get A-bomb limb, mass grip, two grip charges. Get over here! Oh yeah, that takes me back. The big downside to DK right now is the damage feels a little low. Maybe I just suck at putting out, but it didn't seem to compare to the other tanks. Devs are working on tuning, so we'll see if that improves. Moving on. Mob. Okay. Here's the tank for those of you who grew up thinking you were the Green Ranger. If you're just coming off of a keg smash healing high, unfortunately that set piece is not going to be carrying through. But don't worry, you can still impress your Kimberly by having every defensive CD known to monks on your action bars. Kinda like the Druid, if you can manage your CDs you're going to be in love with the monk. Between that and their incredible movement abilities, aka being able to take Tiger's Lust and Chi Torpedo, among other abilities, dying is not an option. And there is only one thing we say to death. Not today. Mistakes don't mean the end of a dungeon run for a monk. And trust me, I make my fair share of mistakes. But on top of that, your DPS are going to be happy because they can get up occasionally to check on their hot pockets without anyone noticing because monks are packing this X-Pack. Oh, look at these pious pricks. Yup, paladins are back with about as much narcissism as a giant orange Cheeto. 
I never understood why people got so upset over a Cheeto, but whatever. Paladins are still pretty close to the top of the ladder in my opinion. Damage is still pretty high despite some recent nerfs. I like that you can take both Divine Purpose and Seraphim, and that you can make Avenging Wrath do just about whatever you want it to. You also get some legendary abilities that'll carry over, including Mad Paragon and Bulwark of Righteous Fury. You know, the one that makes your Shield of the Righteous do more damage. You also have the Legion Artifact ability and Divine Toll coming along for the ride. There's a lot of different ways to run a Protection Paladin, and it looks great. Demon Hunter. The bad boys and girls are back with a vengeance! Having access to the Hunt, Elysian Decree, and Fell Devastation gives them endless AoE damage options, and that doesn't even cover the Spirit Bomb that takes the bad guys to Pound Town. The Soulmonger talent really helps give the healer time to focus on the <laughs> standing in the fire looking for a haste buff by giving you a passive absorb ability. So if you collect souls like Amber Heard collects haters, you'll never die. I also like that you can choose to take as many or as few sigils as you want, depending on your situation. Warrior. The Hunks of Steel are back. Warriors truly earned that unstoppable force title this X back. The Rage Generation is uncanny, giving you plenty of mitigation and damage all day long. There are a couple of cool talents that I like and I think are deserving of some recognition. First. You have the ability to morph your Challenging Shout to become an AoE Interrupt. You also basically have your own Tremor Totem with the Berserker's Rage Morph ability. Titanic Throw is also pretty awesome. It makes the Heroic Throw feel more meaningful. It helps with the threat generation on pull. It's also helpful if there's a mob hanging out on the side that wants to hit someone else, but you have a Mage who just dropped a Blizzard and a Warlock who just dropped a Rain of Fire on the group of mobs you did manage to get together. Or... You can continue to be a d and pull all the mobs out of the stationary AoE because you like watching new Nerd Rage compilations on YouTube and you'd like to feel like you're contributing. All in all, I think this talent tree change is shaping up to be pretty good so far. I like the way tanks feel and I'm pretty sure I'll be running plenty of content with most tanks. Let me know what kind of tank you want to play during Dragonflight in the comments below. And don't forget to kick the like button and the kneecap and subscribe to see more of this stuff.